Throw everything you know about sharpening out the window because there's only one sharpening tool in Photoshop to use, but it's hidden in an unlikely place. Now the sharpening adjustment in question is called the high pass filter, and we can find it by going to filter and down here to other and then high pass. So it's in an unlikely place because it's not under sharpening and it's not in the camera raw filter, which are the two other areas that we would assume have our sharpening adjustments. But in fact, it's the high pass that is the best sharpening tool, in my opinion, inside of Photoshop. Now we can apply this filter directly onto our image layer if we would like, or if you ever find that the following results get a little bit of a color change in your image, then you'll want to first click on the image layer and press command Command or Control J to duplicate it, and then we can just desaturate it by going to Image, Adjustments, and then Desaturate. I'll rename this layer to Sharpening, and now this is the layer I'll apply my filter onto. So once again, going to Filter, Other, and then High Pass, let's discuss what the heck is going on here. Because we have this crazy gray looking image, and how is this supposed to sharpen our photo? Well, at the most basic level, sharpening is just edge contrast. Every edge in Photoshop has a light and dark side, and with the high pass filter, we're essentially accentuating those light and dark areas. As we go and increase the radius here, you can see that the edges, or the radius from each edge in the photo, becomes larger and larger, and therefore we get more and more of our subject in view. But if we were to apply this as our sharpening, adjustment, it would look super over sharpened and way too intense for us. So instead, we want to go for a really subtle look where we can just hardly see the details of our image coming through the gray. As you'll see in just a moment, it's quite surprising how these little bits of details that we can see now translate into amazing sharpening adjustments with some blending modes. But for this example, I'm just gonna bring this down to probably around here. I can see the glint in the eyes really well. The hair of his beard sticks out nicely. So I think this will be a good starting point, but every image will require something different. Just keep in mind how this generally looks for my filter adjustment, and you can use that as your baseline in your image. Images. But anyways, I'll click OK to apply that filter onto my sharpening layer, which was the black and white layer. And now we of course need to remove all of this gray, but keep that edge contrast, which is the sharpening that we created with the high pass filter. We can do that with a layer blending mode called linear light. So going to our layer blending mode and going down here to linear light, this will remove all of the gray from our photo, but it's going to keep the highlights and shadows that define our edges. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see the major difference that that already makes in our photo to sharpening it. It basically takes our original image, which looks slightly out of focus now, and makes it really tack sharp, especially in the really fine details of his toque and things like that. So turning that on and off, you can see how crazy of a difference that gives us, especially in like macro photography or wildlife images or portraits where you want them to look really, really crisp. This is the best sharpening adjustment to use. But up to this point, I just kept saying edge contrast and use linear light because it keeps the edge contrast. But what do I actually mean by that? Well, what we need to remember about the linear light blending mode is that anything over 50% gray will be lightened, anything under 50% gray will be darkened, and anything that is 50% gray will be removed. If I go and change this layer blending mode back to normal, we can see these differences very clearly in our preview. We have our 50% gray, which are the areas that don't define an edge. And then around every single edge here, you can see that we have a light point and a dark point. And these two areas around every edge within the image are basically having contrast added to them so they look more intense. When we have that extra contrast around all the edges in our image, our eyes perceive that as a more defined edge and therefore a more crisp image. So that's essentially the trick that we're playing with this adjustment. When we use the linear light blending mode, we're just getting rid of all the gray that we don't need, but we're keeping that nice contrast that helps make the edges in our photo pop a lot more. Now, in many cases, you might find that this is just too intense. So turning this on and off again, you can see how it does a great job at sharpening, but maybe it's a bit too intense, especially around areas of his cheek and things like that. So if that's the case, we'll often need to go to the opacity slider and just bring this down until we have a more subtle sharpening adjustment, one that just looks a lot more natural and clean. So if I zoom a little bit further into his beard here, I'll turn this on and off. 
you can see how it does make a nice difference, but it's very realistic. It's blended in. It doesn't look like we've applied this crazy filter onto our image. Now, of course, there are many sharpening tools in Photoshop, but the high pass filter is my favorite since it's simple to use, easy to apply, and really easy to understand. And it does as good a job as any. But if you have different sharpening tools that you prefer, I'd love to know all about them down in the comments below. There's a lot of ways to do this stuff. This is just one of them, but hopefully you can put these skills to good use in your next project. See you next time.